Um, hi. Um, my name is Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky. I am, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I did the same thing in Valencia. Um, <laughs> so I'm a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks. Um, uh, and uh, if you're not familiar, uh, oh, and Dog Mom to Two Rescues, and I, I force them to, to pose for me. So um, if you're not familiar with Weaveworks, it is founded on open source. Um, we created Flux and Flagger, which are CNCF donated projects. Um, and we have a, a bunch of other projects within um, the CNCF, along with several additions that we've created for, um, uh, like uh, as additions to Flux um, for GitOps, such as Weave GitOps, the Terraform controller, which we're going to be talking about today, um, VS Code extension, and several others. Okay, so uh, I know they already kind of went over this, but just you know, uh, for anyone that just walked in or people that are watching this later in the um, recording, um, what is GitOps? Did I? I think I might have. Sorry. I moved it. Okay, I think it'll come back. So, um, sorry. No, no, there it is. It's, it's back. Thank you, Scott. So, um, I just want to highlight uh, that, like, what is GitOps? It's an operating model for um, cloud native applications such as Kubernetes. Um, and I do want to um, mention that it's not just for Kubernetes. So, if you are doing a multi cloud infrastructure, you can still use GitOps. But um, we're here talking about Kubernetes, so we'll be focusing on, um, because we'll be focusing on Flux. So um, GitOps utilizes a version controlled system, most commonly Git, as the single source of truth. And it enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, um, monitoring, and management by a version controlled system. And with GitOps, like they mentioned earlier, you manage your infrastructure and applications declaratively. So they went over the GitOps principles earlier, so I'm not gonna go over them in a lot of detail, but uh, just wanted to point them out again here. Um, like they mentioned, they, they created these, the GitOps working group created these GitOps principles as guidelines um, by talking to several end users and coming up with these best practices. Um, I'm briefly, you know, uh, they should be, everything should be declar uh, declarative, um, everything should be versioned and immutable. Um, things are pulled automatically by a software agent and continuously reconciled as well. So you get away from configuration drift, everything's written in code so it's reusable, you have an audit trail, um, and there, because it's versioned and immutable, there's no sneaking in a change. Um, and keep in mind that these are just a set of best practices. If you don't already meet these, you can still get started using GitOps. Um, Everyone's journey looks different, and you can always, you know, add tweak, tweak it to add hardening later. So, so why GitOps? Why should you even, you know, want to do this? I'm sure if y'all are here, you'll probably already uh, know that there's a lot of benefits to GitOps. But um, because of GitOps's tools' unique way, uh, ability to treat everything as code, um, it creates a direct impact on security. For example, if all configuration and security policy is treated as code, then everything can be held in version control. So any and all changes that are made can be reviewed and input into um, an automated way. And so there's no manual processes. Hopefully you're less likely to be at work on a weekend because of some you know, mistake that someone made when they're doing a, a manual deployment. So now we'll get into what is Flux. So Flux is a Git-centric package manager for your applications, but Git isn't the only um, source that you can use with Flux, um, and it provides a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes. It's a natural extension. It was really created with um, Kubernetes in mind, so it's a natural extension of the benefits of Kubernetes. And at the core of it, it is continuously monitoring your version control system, and it applies the desired state that's been de um, expressed uh, declaratively there. The nice part of this is that you don't have to worry about configuration drift because it reconciles on a set schedule. So if things for some reason have gotten out of sync, it will um, set it back to the desired state. And it really reduces developer burden because, um, like I said, it removes the need for manual deployment processes as well. And also, the Flux CLI is a really convenient way to bootstrap the system in a cluster and to then um, access the, the custom resources that make up the API. 
So these are some things that we like to just highlight about Flux um, and the uh, key things that we point out in our website about Flux. Um, Flux provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. You just, um, using Flux and Flagger, you can actually do progressive delivery um, with Canary's feature flags and AV rollouts as well. Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource. Um, infrastructure and workload dependency management is built in as well. Also, you just git push um, and Flux does the rest. Flux manages deployments through automatic reconciliation. Um, Flux works with your existing tools uh, because like I said, it was created with Kubernetes and all your like ecosystem in mind. Um, it works with your Git providers, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and you can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source, um, Helm repositories, all major container registries, and all CI workflow providers. It also works with any Kubernetes and all common Kubernetes tooling, such as Customize, Helm, RBAC, and policy-driven validation like OPA, Kyverno, admission controllers. So it really just falls into place with what you have set up already. Um, it does multi-tenancy, and as we like to say, multi-everything. Um, it uses true Kubernetes RBAC via impersonation and supports multiple Git repositories. Multi-cluster infrastructure and apps work out of the box with cluster API. Um, with Flux, you can use one Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or other clusters, spin up additional clusters itself, and manage clusters including lifecycle and fleets as well. Flux also alerts and notifies. You, um, it can provide health assessments, alerting to external systems, and external events handling. You just get push and you can get notified on Slack and other chat systems. Um, users trust Flux. I myself am actually, my experience with Flux and why I'm even here talking about it, besides being a developer experience uh, engineer at Weaveworks now, I before that was actually um, a GitOps platform engineer at a very large company and we set up GitOps on our Kubernetes, on-prem Kubernetes platform there. So um, that's my experience with Flux and I'm a huge fan of Flux. Um, and it was super simple to set up for us. Um, and there's a really awesome community. I feel like this community um, is one of the best I've ever worked with. We also welcome contributors of any kind. Um, the components of Flux are on Kubernetes core controller runtime, so anyone can contribute and its functionality can be extended very easily as well. All right, so um, what are the benefits of Flux? So Flux, is, um, like I said, it reduces the developer burden by, um, it removes the cube control problem. You don't have to worry about cube control versions anymore to be able to interact with your cluster. Um, it's also very extensible, it's versatile, it works with existing tools, um, it's really flexible, and because of the microservice architecture, which I'm about to mention in a second, it, you can pick and choose what you want to tailor your own experience with Flux. So, uh, Flux is a set of Kubernetes controllers, um, and so it's, if you're not familiar with controllers, um, a controller handles the life cycle of objects in Kubernetes, like what should be done when an object is created, updated, deleted, et cetera. Um, and so these are the controllers, and the main controllers, so the Terraform controller is actually in addition to the Flux, I'll get to it, but uh, the, the actual Flux controllers are, um, the source controller fetches artifacts and stores them as, uh, fetches manifests and stores them as artifacts so that the customized controller can then apply the manifests and it runs manifest generation using customize. And I just wanna mention real quick too, um, I know the like, fact that it's called the customized controller can sometimes be confusing, but it is named thusly because it's using customization in the background. So if you do have a customization YAML already set in the folder that you're pointing it to, it will just um, take whatever's written there and uh, apply that. If you don't have a customization YAML set, it actually creates one in the background. It recursively searches for your YAMLs in that um, folder path and it will um, create its own customization and just generate all those, the, um, run all those um, manifests. And then there's the Helm controller, which controls deployment of Helm charts. The notification controller um, specializes in handling inbound and outbound events. And the image reflector controller reflects image metadata um, for the automation controller, which then updates YAML when new container images are available. So basically they both work together to, um, to uh, update a Git repository when new container images are available. 
And it works with a ton of other tools. I'm not gonna list them all, but these are just some that I uh, thought to list out. And um, so basically, like I said, it'll work with whatever you're using, basically, in your environment. And these are some reasons that um, I personally, as an end user and others that I've talked to, um, love Flux. It really does, does make life easier um, in my own personal experience. Multi-tenancy is uh, super simple to set up. Um, and I personally have only ever done um, soft multi-tenancy, so creating namespaces within a cluster. Um, but like I said, you can do hard multi-tenancy, create additional clusters as well using it. Um, depends on is a cool feature. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, look it up, it's really cool. Um, and then uh, it's got fantastic Helm integration. I mentioned notifications and alerts. Bootstrap is something that you'll see um, when I show the demo, and then um, the Flux CLI is really awesome as well. And now, <laughs> the thing that y'all are here for, obviously, uh, the Terraform controller. So. What is the Terraform controller? The Terraform controller was created by Weaveworks, and it's a free and open source um, Flux controller that can manage Terraform resources. So it will not come when you bootstrap it, when you bootstrap Flux or install Flux, but um, it is an additional thing that you can install onto your cluster. And um, Terraform resources that can be managed are not limited to Kubernetes resources. Um, and uh, if you, you know, want to install it, uh, this is the GitHub link right here. And then there are some really great docs that are written as well. Um, with this, this specifically, I wanted to point out this use cases link as well, because um, if you go there, it's uh, super detailed on like different ways that you can use the Terraform controller, and then it has um, detailed instructions on how to actually set those um, specific resources up. So, okay. So what are the benefits of the Terraform controller? Uh, you know, there's, there's full GitOps automation, um, and you can use GitOps for existing Terraform resources as well. And you don't have to have it automatically apply your um, Terraform resources. You can set it to actually do manual applies as well, so you can read the plan and make sure it's what you wanna um, have applied before applying it. Also, you can set it up to just do drift detection of Terraform resources. So let's say you're already, you have your Terraform deployments deployed in some way already, um, and you don't wanna switch off from that, but you wanna be um, notified if for some reason things get um, out of sync. You can set it up to do that as well, and I'll show that in a second as well. Uh, and basically, it's used as a glue for Terraform resources and Kubernetes workloads as well. So, um, these are some features of the Terraform controller, and I kid you not, like if you check the docs within like a few days, it'll probably already change because there's so many things being added to this controller daily. So um, keep an eye out for any new features there. Um, so the first one, like I mentioned, you can set it up to do manual or auto approvals. Um, and then drift detection, like I mentioned, is a really awesome feature. You can have it do that whether you want it to be doing applies or not as well. Um, and then it also ac accepts a list of config maps and secrets as variables. Okay, and the state file is stored in a secret by default. So that's the default action if you don't already have somewhere that you're storing your um, state file. But you can override that with your, um, like whatever backend you're using right now. So whatever backend you wanna use to store your secret uh, state file, you can. Um, and then also it has the ability to set up health checks um, it, you can, there's a flag that you can add to tell it to destroy resources on deletion. That's not the default behavior, um, just like it's not in Flux. And um, you can write outputs to a secret as well. So if you need to use it later, you can write outputs to a secret and then use them somewhere else. Also, um, recently, fairly recently, I would say within the last maybe month or two, um, concurrency was actually added. So before this, it would do all the jobs right in the same um, controller, and it would just run them like one after the other. And recently, um, runner pods were added, so uh, now it can do, I think they, the Terraform controller team did a test with um, 1,500 Terraform modules um, successfully, so that's really exciting. Um, and so it, it's able to reconcile and provision high volumes of Terraform modules concurrently. Um, greatly scalable, and with that, you can actually customize your runner pod as well, so if you have like a custom image or something that you need to set, you can do that. Um, and with uh, Flux's new addition of um, OCI support, uh, the Terraform controller was quick to follow, 
So the Terraform controller also can use the OC OCI artifacts as source um, and create OCI artifacts, all that jazz. Um, and there is the ability to force unlock Terraform state if for some reason you need it. Um, and lastly, we also uh, have, um, it does play nicely with Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterpri Enterprise as well. There's integration with that if you're using that for your backend or whatever. Okay, and so um, before I go into my demo, I just wanna mention that um, we have, uh, um, you know, these are, these are the events that Weaveworks is uh, doing at um, uh, KubeCon, GitOpsCon. So if you want, you can um, scan this QR code and get more information about what we're up to and um, things like that as well. So, and check us out at our booth. We have a Flux booth uh, in the Project Pavilion and we also have a Weaveworks booth as well. So please come talk to us um, if you wanna chat with me about the Terraform controller as well. So, now I have a demo, but I have to tell y'all I am terrified of live demos. So I pre-recorded it and I'm gonna talk over it because I do not wanna tempt fate. So, that's what's happening. <laughs> so, all right. So in this demo, what's going on is um, my uh, coworker Russ actually created this awesome repository called Flux Vault Demo, and you can go fork it, you can go play with it. It's really awesome. If you, um, it just what it does is it sets up Vault, and it has a couple of, uh, it sets up uh, the, it bootstraps Flux. Hang on, I'll just, I'll run the demo and then I'll <laughs> talk over it and we'll see it. But um, so if you run Make. It, there's a make file in this project that, um, give myself a second to catch up. Okay, so in here, you can see it creates a kind cluster, um, make sure that these environment variables are set, and then it just runs bootstrap, which bootstrap is a really awesome command um, within the Flux CLI to get started really quickly and easily with Flux. Um, and it tells it which path, so that dash dash path is telling it to listen to in that repository Flux Vault demo, it's saying listen to that kind folder. And the thing about Bootstrap is if you don't already have this repository created, it will create a repository for you in your GitHub, and then it'll bootstrap into it. So it'll um, clone it down and put all the manifests that are necessary into it, and then um, run them, and then have Flux listening to that repository. But if you already have that repository created and you bootstrap into it, it'll um, just, you know, clone it and run the manifest that are already there. And the nice thing about Bootstrap is you can run it as many times as you want. So if you go and update the Flux CLI and then you rerun um, Bootstrap, it'll actually update to the newest version of Flux, which is really cool. So you can see there, sorry, really briefly, the, the um, pods that were set up. So those are the controllers. Um, and so in here, you can see, uh, like I mentioned, those um, YAMLs that are created by Bootstrap or in this case, they were already there, but um, so it creates this Flux system namespace, which is where all of those Flux components are installed. Um, creates a GOTK sync file, which is this file that has all of the, um, oh no, this, sorry, <laughs> it has all the, the just the, the source that's created and the customization. And the source is telling the source controller to go listen to this Flux Vault demo repo, and that interval is saying every one minute, um, go check this repo for any changes and pull the manifests. The customization is saying, um, go apply what's in that Flux Vault demo, but specifically in that cluster's kind folder path that we told it in Bootstrap, and that's gonna be reconciled every 10 minutes. So it's gonna go um, force apply what's pulled by the source controller there. And then, in here, this is the apps.yaml that, um, so this is an additional customization that's then pointing to this base apps path within this full, uh, project itself. And in that base apps path, we have um, the YAMLs for the Terraform controller. And um, it's pointing to the um, Helm chart for the Terraform controller. This is my favorite way to set up the Terraform controller is through the Helm repository and the Helm release. So. Um, this is kind of what I recommend to set it up, and you know, you can point it to the latest version of the Terraform controller chart. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Helm, Helm uh, in Flux, this, it, this is how you set it up. You tell it to point to a Helm repository, and then specifically to a Helm release, and this is where you give like the values that you wanna override in the chart, um, and you point to the chart specs as well. And then this is saying every hour go apply this chart. So that's what's happening in here. And then, 
so also in here is vault. So this is also setting up just the vault instance, um, so the vault namespace, and then also vault through the Helm chart as well. So this is using the um, Helm chart for vault. And um, what we are using Terraform for, which is not set up yet, but um, so basically right now we just have a generic vault instance that's running, but we don't have anything that's set up. So I um, am actually setting up a webhook so that I can set up notifications in Slack. So this is how you set up the notification controller. I um, Don't make the mistake I did and push the secret <laughs> with the webhook to um, Git because it will delete your webhook in Slack. Slack is smart enough to know that if you've pushed a secret with the webhook to Git, it will delete it. So that took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to realize, but I applied it as a secret so then I can um, reference it when I'm setting up the notification um, controller part. So I'm, I had it all commented it out, but um, yeah, so. Okay, so this part. This is important because by default, the notification controller is built for Flux, right? Just Flux. So it's not actually listening to Terraform events by default. Um, so this, this, uh, these CRDs needed to be added to tell the notification controller to also go listen to um, Terraform events and things like that. So this is important to add if you are trying to set up the notification controller, specifically for the uh, Terraform controller. Um, and then that's pull it pushed, so. Yeah, so this is the Terraform notification, like how it's actually set up. So um, you tell the notification controller which provider you want it to connect to. In this case, it's a Slack webhook. Um, I, I have that secret ref that I pushed with the actual webhook. And then the alert is how you tell the notification controller, like, hey, alert me on, on this thing based on that provider. So I'm telling it to um, alert me on any Terraform events um, and, and any, any, any and all <laughs> Terraform events. Um, and so that's what's happening there. Okay, and then, um, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna reconcile it. So this is how you reconcile when you make a change in Flux. Um, so in this case, I'm reconciling the source. and. The reason I only have to reconcile the source in this case is because um, the source controller, when it actually pulls in a new SHA, will also kick off to the customization controller and tell it to go apply, if there's actually a change. Um, so, if there's not, it won't do that, but, so. Okay. So, um, now in here, I'm going to add this, um, so this is similar to how you add like a customization or a Helm release. It's saying, um, one second, I guess let me. It's okay, basically what it is, is it's telling the Terraform controller, hey, go listen to this um, Terraform file path. And so, yeah, so, okay. So you say kind Terraform and then it's listening to that k 8 vault config path and it's saying every one minute go and apply it. There are a few things I wanna point out really fast. Oh, I, oh yeah, okay, I came back. <laughs> um, is this approved plan, and it's set to an empty string, which is how you would tell it to be manual applying. Um, if you wanted it to do auto up applies, you would say auto within that quote. Or I don't think if you just don't have it, I think it also would do the same thing. Um, also, this store readable plan is also important because um, it's saying store my plan into a config map, and human is just saying, you know, just the way that you're used to seeing a plan with all those plus signs and changes and everything. Um, and then, uh, okay, so this is what the Terraform is pointing to. So there is a, you know, it's setting up the vault instance with all the, the back end and auth and everything, and then it also creates this secret in here, um, this KV secret too. Um, it's just a demo cred secret with some, you know, exposed <laughs> credentials in there, just some fun stuff. Um, and so then, once I reconcile this, it will then have that Terraform uh, also added there. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> so, um, there, so now that that's actually there, um, it's not 
ready actually to be um, applied. So I can do this cube control get config maps to output the um, plan specifically to see it before we apply it. So this is what that would look like. What, if you're used to Terraform, you're used to seeing things like this. This is very um, familiar to you. And so, oh great, looks good, we love it. So <laughs> I'm gonna go in here and you take that, um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, sorry. It outputs a, so you see here where it says plan generated, set it to this string. Um, so I grab that and I um, put it in there into the, um, that, that quotes where it said approve plan and I reconciled that. And so that's the way of approving the plan manually if you wanna go that route. So then um, I'm going to actually set it back to auto so that we can, um, I can show you like what configuration drift looks like and what the notification looks like real quick. Um, so that's back to auto. Um, we're gonna reconcile that. And now if we go into the instance of vault that was created, um, you can see that there's this demo creds that you know was created with that Terraform. I deleted it. Um, and if we go into um, that Slack channel that's being um, notified, you can see that there is a drift detected and it says that that cred has been deleted. And um, if we give it even, I think, a second more, it will actually, um, it's back, it's stood back up. So that's because we have that auto apply set, so it's um, continuously reconciling. And that is it, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>